What is next? All right, so this was very interesting in our Discord. This was announced that Frontier shares dropped 40% in 24 hours. So there must have been a share drop. I didn't realize they were publicly listed. I have ne I did not know that Frontier Development was actually a publicly listed company. That's new to me. Uh, but 40%. So uh, Obsidian Ant is doing a video on this. And if you noticed, if you noticed, Obsidian Ant is now focusing more on Star Citizen content. Now this, I think, is again because player retention is sh just absolute shite right now with Elite Dangerous and what has happened with Odyssey. And there's a huge disconnect in the Elite Dangerous community right now. They do and personally, I understand that and relate to it because it happened to me a long time ago when PvE grind came before PvP, and I'm a big PvPer, and it is always hard to balance a game so the PvEers and PvPers can exist and coexist, but it really has to do with policing and sectioning out solar systems in a manner where security can tolerate both types of playing styles. <sighs> Frontier is development has been focusing on exploration and PVE for so very long. Odyssey flopped when it came out. I, I personally like the fact that they're trying to be more transparent, but it seems as if they pushed Odyssey out way too fast. People are having a, a hell of a time trying to get back in who have been long, long termally dangerous uh, commanders. Because graphics have now suffered and taken a step backwards. People who are very popular content creators in the Elite Dangerous world, like uh, Commander Kate, who is now Citizen Kate, uh, and many other commanders who have switched and gone over to Star Citizen because they are so unhappy with the Elite Dangerous experience we here call ED erectile dysfunction. I personally have always liked the flight model in Elite Dangerous. Um... I, I, I've i always loved the flight model, and I am a proponent of that flight model. I like the flight model. Some people would disagree with me on that. However, the, the game needs a complete revamp in terms of focus. David Brobin, Frontier Development, have just really had a hard time connecting with their audience. And here, let's watch a little bit of Obsidian Ant's take on this. Obsidian kind of puts me to sleep. No, no offense to Obsidian. He's got that ASMR voice. So we might kind of skip around in this <laughs> a little bit. But I just want to get the vibe and, and see what Obsidian Ant thinks about what is happening right now in the Elite Dangerous community with Frontier shares dropping 40% in 24 hours. This is a brand new channel update. Thank you everyone for coming along. Welcome to the video. See you, Lou. Uh, basically, this is all about answering questions and addressing subjects raised by Patreon supporters and YouTube members. <laughs> it's a way of me saying thank you to all the support shown over the months. And it's a way of me showing support. I love, I love how he overemphasizes. Like the affect is so very well done by. Like I really think, like when he wakes up, he's like, goes in the mirror. Like, I feel like Obsidian Ant goes in the mirror and he's like, practices, you know, elite dangerous, elite dangerous, elite dangerous. Like, I feel like, I feel like he just practices every day in front of a mirror to get that perfect tonality, if you will. <laughs> and over the years to the channel, it's also a way of saying thank you, of course, to all the subscribers because everyone gets to watch this. Now, in this episode, we've got a whole load of different topics to address. The last few months have certainly been interesting. There is one other subject I it's want to address name. before we really get and into he does the great content. Video, which, of course, he is really about does. the channel update. But this specific subject is about Frontier. Now, uh, although this <laughs> right, channel right, yeah. is very much focused on Elite Dangerous, that's by no means the, uh, fully, uh, the full extent of this channel. It accounts for about 30% of the views overall. So a big part of the channel, oh, but not shit. the entire content. What is but he going to say? Something here? come up today about Frontier that I did want to discuss, and uh, really, I don't think it's worthy of its own. He sees the writing on the wall, maybe. 
video. So uh, this seems the best place to put it in here. So what's happened? Frontier Developments today, their shares have tumbled. They've dropped by 35%. Each share is now worth wow. about £17, I think. A fucking $1,700 a share for Frontier Development? The fuck? That's very pricey. I didn't realize they had shares. Wow. Wow, they went from 2500 down to 1695 Anarchy, check that chart out, dude. That's scary. <laughs> they dropped as low as £15 earlier today, and that's down from around about £26 on Friday. The height earlier in the year was £36 per share, so overall, the Frontier have had a pretty, a pretty significant hit to their entire share value. So, what went wrong? What's the cause of this latest tumble in Frontier share prices? Well, it turns out the latest game, Jurassic World Evolution oh, oh, 2, oh, oh, oh. really hasn't... But wait, aren't pounds more than a dollar in terms of value, though? Hold on a second, let me go back to that. Yeah, so it's actually even more. Oh, pence, pence, thank you, thank you, thank you. Been the thank big you, seller thank that you, they thank hoped you. it would be. <laughs> thank you. This in turn has had a knock on effect. Surely shit. Initially Holy shit, I thought that was priced in pounds. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm like, that is not possible. I was trying to wrap my head around that. I'm like, there is no possible fucking way the valuation could be that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Estimated their revenues for this financial year to be around about £140 million. Due to the low initial sales of Jurassic World Evolution 2, and you will also notice here they do mention the lower than expected sales of Odyssey as well. Fonte have downgraded these revenue estimates to be between 100 million Look at and that. 130 million pounds, so a significant downgrade. That in turn has shaken confidence from uh, the shareholders, and the share value has therefore been downgraded. Yep. So why did Jurassic World Evolution 2 not have high? Every time, and this ha this happens with them. Dr Elite Dangerous is not even their big bread and butter money maker. It's Jurassic Park. So interestingly, they put a lot of time into Odyssey, and Odyssey completely flopped, and they did not get the revenues that they expected they would on Elite Dangerous, which might mean that they're actually going to put less focus on Elite Dangerous moving forward. So watch out, Elite Dangerous commanders, because Odyssey flopped. Revenues came in lower, and if you're a CEO or if you're somebody who's a CFO or you're in, in the biz of, of making games and you see that the amount of time versus the amount of money coming in and you're seeing that, that Frontier is literally underperforming like that, I can guarantee you there will be less developers focused on, on Elite Dangerous based upon those revenue numbers. My initial sales. Well, the first game had some pretty high sales, very, very successful for Frontier. In fact, one of their biggest selling titles ever. Uh, I think they probably, uh, perhaps quite justifiably, had high expectations for the second title. Now, there could be a, a whole load of different reasons why the second title hasn't initially sold quite as well. Uh, but that said, reviews on Steam seem to be mostly positive. Metacritic has mixed reviews with a, a user rating of around about 6.8 and a critic rating of 79%, so not really as good as it should be there. Certainly doesn't seem like an exceptional title. I wouldn't feel that way if I uh, come across Metacritic anyway on that particular game, but also it doesn't seem too particularly terrible either. Frontier, meanwhile, will feel that the uh, low sales are due to a crowded marketplace. Yeah, uh, November is always busy, and I think any games company knows that. So if you're going to release a title in November, then you better expect it to have to meet some pretty stiff competition. So I'm sure Frontier would have known that well ahead of time. Uh, November is traditionally a busy time for brand new games. Overall, though, the company feels that the uh, Jurassic World will sell enough over time, over the course of its lifespan, and meet and perhaps even exceed, uh, exceed the revenue from the first version of Jurassic World Evolution. So uh, yeah, there we have it. Now, there could be some other factors in play here, of course. We know Frontier's reputation has recently taken a pretty big hit thanks to the failure <laughs> right, of Odyssey, sketch. but not only Odyssey itself, but the way Frontier responded to that. A lot of LoL players have kind of wandered off, wow. lost interest in Elite, and I've seen many, many comments. Both Look at the fall off here, man, on the search for Elite Dangerous going down and down and down and down and down and down and down. Whew, that is not good.
Again, why Obsidian Ant is more focused on Star Citizen, which just broke 400 million in support by its very own backers. 400 million. Talked about them actually recording a profit for the first time in a very long time. Very excited that they did because I've been pounding the table that I want to see a profit from Cloud Imperium. Now, that was just with Companies House in the UK. We will know more about uh, what happens in the States here when they report uh, on the Cloud Imperium website as to what the U.S. is going to report, which I, again, believe to see we will also see a big profit uh, being reported as well. So very encouraging on what's happening with Cloud Imperium, very discouraging what's happening with Frontier Development. Both on my YouTube videos as well as across the Internet, uh, saying that they will never that these people will, will never buy another Frontier game again. So has this had an impact as well? Of course, it could be a vocal, a very vocal minority saying these things. There's no real, real way to be certain of exactly what's going on. But if I were to play some bets, I would say that Frontier's hit to the reputation has probably played at least a small part in their current sales of Jurassic World Evolution 2. Oh, here's something really interesting that I saw in chat here. Evil says, hey, let's see a search comparison, Detective 360. All right, let's do it. Let's see what we got here. Uh, we can see, wow. I'm surprised Star Citizen is so low. Look at that. Look at that. But you can see now, sometime here uh, in August, right around the beginning of August, Star Citizen actually starting to overtake Elite Dangerous. But who would have thought? Who would have thought that the search actually was quite low on Star Citizen like that? But you, you can see a crossover. You can see a crossover now happening between, you know, while now Star Citizen is being searched much more. And that bump up, that bump up that you see way over there, I guarantee is when Odyssey about came, close to when Odyssey launched and people were very upset with Odyssey. And you can now see this, 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 that the Star Citizen is overtaking Elite Dangerous by quite a bit. And I can guarantee you it is the, it is the people from Elite Dangerous coming over flooding over i mean odyssey was a gift that landed in cloud imperium's lap i mean i'm pretty sure that that chris is very happy I'm, I'm pretty sure that chris is very happy what's happening thank you very much evil for that idea as we and this is why i always pay attention here to the fam they got good ideas and it's always important that's why i always have the chat here uh, you guys are saying great things and having great discussions Either way, if you're interested in how Frontier does in the future, this might be something worth keeping an eye, an eye on. After all, they do have some pretty big titles coming up over the next years, most notably their Formula One management game, a very, very big franchise for them. <laughs> anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on to the main content of this video, which of course is about the questions to the Patreon and YouTube members. So uh, let's get to that. Again, always love these questions, always love spending time with all these. These are actually one of my most interesting videos that I do produce. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I really do like making these. Let's get to it. Now, over the coming months, I've also got a whole bunch of different things planned, not least of which is creating a new YouTube channel. More on that in just oh. a bit. So before we go any further then, let's get to the various subjects that have been brought up by all the uh, It is the Plexus Syndicate, Verb. John. But not we'll much going on Microsoft there, so don't worry about it yet. But when the game goes full, available on Xbox I'll get very active with it. So uh, by the time you watch this video, you'll probably already have an answer for that question, as the, I believe the update will have already been released, or maybe not quite just yet. All right. So this is this is more about this is more about his channel, what he's planning to do with his channel. But it sounds to me like he's not going to do as much elite dangerous content. Perhaps you know this is what the second channel that he's creating is for. Because that must be very hard to do. These these titles are very polarizing. I used to do both Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen on the channel. I still do from time to time. I love to talk about Elite Dangerous. Like, I'm always rooting for Elite Dangerous. You know, like, there are elements to Elite Dangerous that I do like. I know I, I'm very vocal about it because I'm passionate about the game. I want it to succeed. I, you know, when I talk shit about Elite Dangerous and Frontier and David, it's only out of frustration and passion for the title. You know, I it's not like I'm tr I'm wishing the the death of Elite Dangerous. I mean, Frontier and David are doing that well enough on their own. Uh, so I I really want to see a successful Elite Dangerous. 
But as you can see and you can hear here from one of the biggest content creators of Elite Dangerous, he's, you know, he's he's seeing the writing on the wall. And after looking at the the uh, quarterly earnings and after hearing the conference call or lead, uh, reading um, the manuscript from the, the, the call, you can see the frontier is and not is not in a good place. They are not in a good place. While Cloud Imperium best they've ever been. Cloud Imperium now reporting profits uh, for Q uh, for entire year 2020. I can tell you if they recorded it in 2020, 2021 is going to have a gangbusters profit uh, recorded as well. At least in my mind, I'm speculating, but I would imagine that they would if 2020 is turning out the way that 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 is being shown on the company's house reports. So this is why we see expansion. This is why we see the new offices in Manchester going to, going to be happening and Frankfurt going to be happening. The, this is what we're seeing with Cloud Imperium and their goal to hit 1,000 employees, which is really, I think, very aggressive, a very bold move in this environment. And for any company that can make a profit right now, kudos to them. They're doing the right things. And for a long time, there, there's there been a, a plague of criticism against Chris and how the company is being run and, and what's being done with the money. But the progress is being shown in a financial format now that is really intriguing. You know, I, I've always been very skeptical of the business model, you know, because I think one of the things I worry about the most are ship sales being their primary form of revenue and wondering how they're going to make a transition when the game is finalized. And if perhaps ship sales are in essence a crutch of sorts to keep that money going. And when will the game be final, right? So these are these are really rational discussions and debates to be had about Cloud Imperium and Star Citizen and their and their model. But it is obviously working for them. With over 400 million brought in, you can see the differences between the two companies. You can see the differences in how they attack it. And I'm telling you what, the execution right now with Cloud Imperium is very well done. It, I mean, they're running on all cylinders right now and they're beating the competition. They're doing it. They're doing it. Back to the show.